Hello and welcome to another of my how to paint cars tutorials. Um, the previous ones, they've all been fairly smaller cars and, and from the more popular uh, family end of the market. Uh, we're going much grander today. Um, we're going to paint what you can see on the picture there, uh, a Rover P5. Now, Rover P5 was, um, people used to call it the poor man's Rolls Royce, was very fancy, posh, smart British car of the 60s. So we start, as always, in the centre of the page with your pencil. Can you make an oval, quite a fat oval, not quite a circle, still taller than it's wide? And this is just above the centre spot of your page. Can you draw another oval outside it? And that's the chrome surround. Now we're going to do another oval underneath the headlight you've just made. Slightly off the centre towards the left with the semicircle to the left for the chrome surround. Then you're going to put a little oval to the right of the one you've just done. And then I want you to make like an upside down J shape right next to it on the right. And that's going to be like the bumper post. The other mark just past the upside down J, that's the bottom left hand edge of the radiator grill. Big and impressive radiator grill on these old Rovers. OK, so take a line pretty much straight up to not quite the top of the headlight. You can have a little slant towards the right, but only a very little one, and then start to curve it round, just like you can see on the picture there. If I'm going to pass fast, remember you can pause the film at any time. So now we're going to do the rest of the radiator grill. Now, the big thing to do here is look at the distances, okay? Gauge the distances with your eye. Now, if you continue the top line of the radiator grill, now can you take it slanting gently upwards towards the center there, and then slanting gently downwards as you continue to the right? The radiator, as you can see, it's got rounded corners, and the right hand edge curves in much more than the left hand edge does, because it's just giving us that sense of perspective there. Now, I did the bottom edge in two lines uh, because that allowed me to mark off where the centre is. I did it at the top as well. OK, remember, you're working in pencil, so you can have as many goes as you like until you're happy. You've got it reasonably like what I've got here. And then we can put the other headlight in. Now you can see it nestles just snugly along the top um, right hand corner of the radiator grill. Another oval, another two ovals in fact, one inside the other, and again slightly smaller than the headlight on the left. Now you can start to add in the light underneath the headlight on the right. But you need room for the bumper post. Can you see I've got like the upside down U and the line alongside it, which are cutting into the oval of the uh, smaller light there. And if you can just try and replicate that and don't forget the semicircle on the uh, left of the um, light, which is going to be its chrome surround. Now we're going to finish off the left hand bumper post there. I don't know what the proper name for those is, but I call them bumper posts. So you can see it's like an upright rectangle with a smaller upright rectangle on the side. And then can you see how I've curved the bumper in there just so it curves in inside uh, beneath, but inside the left hand side of the radiator grill there. That's going to be really useful because now we've established some sight lines for how the radiator is going to grow. So that bit of the bumper you just drew in, from the bottom right hand corner, 
Next to it, you can start to draw in the license plate or the number plate. Uh, that should go parallel to the bottom of the radiator, and slightly past it, and then draw the two lines coming downwards and we'll join those up shortly. Can you also see on the right, but I filled in more detail of the right hand bumper post. Uh, it should be a little fatter. You should see a little bit more of it than the post on the left um, because of the perspective of the car. Again, pause the film until you're happy to move on to the next stage every time. So from the right hand bumper post, we're going to curve a line upwards till it reaches about the same height as the center of the right hand headlight. And you can see it's just curving gently away to the right there. And that's the edge of the car now. Can you see I've also filled in more details of the bumper? I put the bottom line of the um, number plate or the license plate in. And then I came up that and completed the bumper line. Now, what might be easier if you're working in pencil is to actually draw that line all the way across the license plate because you can rub it out to the bits inside it afterwards. But I'm working in pen and ink and that's why I didn't do it that way. I would have if I was working in pencil. So on that line on the right hand edge of the car, the front wing of the car, two little lights to put in. One, the lower one, which is about the same level as the centre of the headlight, that's um, wider than it is tall and vice versa for the one just above it. That's taller than it is wide. OK, just try and get those shapes in. And now we're starting to put the line of the bonnet or the hood in. So you want a gentle curve from the top right hand edge corner of the radiator until it's just above the center of the radiator. Now, if you're looking for how high above the center of the radiator it should be, well, it's about the same distance. If you look at the smaller light underneath the left hand headlight, look at the distance from top to bottom of that. That's about the distance you want from the top of the radiator to the top of the line you're making. OK, if it helps, draw dots first. Draw a dot where you're going to have this line ending and maybe another dot where you think you should start really um, making the curve round to make the bonnet steeper. Now go back to that line you've just drawn. I come down it slightly from the center of the radiator and then I want you to make a line curving slanting downwards to the right only very 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 slight angle of um, descent to meet the top of that top light you drew a couple of stages ago and that's it. You've completed the outline of the front uh, the right hand front wing and the profile of the car is starting to emerge. Put that little mirror on top. Um, you can see it's not too far along to the right on the wing and also can you see I've drawn in a line there from the top of the right hand headlight curving up to meet the bonnet and the curve should be more pronounced than the top edge of the wing. We're cracking on now. So I want you to take the top line of the bonnet and continue the curve, flattening it out until you're just past being above where the top left hand corner of the radiator. Now draw like a tiny little circle there and then draw a line coming down, tapering away from the left right hand edge of the bonnet down towards the centre of the radiator with the curve being more pronounced towards the bottom where it meets, meets the radiator. And then just draw another line um, meeting it. So you've got like a curved trim in the middle of the radiator, middle of the top of the radiator there. Uh, now's a good time to put in the detail, some of the details inside the radiator. Can you see I've drawn it to make um, an exterior trim? And on the left hand side, 
two lines are very close together, but it flattens out on the top so that towards the centre of the radiator, the trim gets wider. And then as it goes towards the right hand side, it gets thinner again until it actually meets the edge on the right hand side. I've also drawn in by this stage the um, right hand side front tyre. Now a way to do this is take a semicircular line from just inside the um, bottom right hand corner of the number plate and then gently curve it round to the middle of the number plate. Then take another line from the bottom of this curve you've just made and just curve it round and up so it meets the uh, bottom of the bumper post. You can put a couple of lines in from the tread in between the two lines you've just made as well. Now more detailing on the bumper. So this goes above the um, license plate, above the number plate. Just draw in that little bar. Now I've also drawn in the two badges. You don't need to have the two badges there at all, but it's always struck me as this kind of rover is exactly the kind of car you'd see the REC badge, which is the badge on the left. Now I'm going to extend the left hand side of the bumper. So look back to the bumper post. Now what you might want to do is where you've got the top line of the bumper on the right of the bumper post, draw that line, continue that line with the same slant round till you're quite some distance past the uh, bottom light and then curve it back up and round. Do the same with the bottom line and then the lines you put in the bumper post where well, you can rub those out after or you go over with them with paint and colour. So you might want to leave it till then. Now, a couple more side lights on the left. So you want to come to the left of the main headlight, start another small oval, um, and the top of this small oval should just be above the level of the surround of the headlight. Draw a semicircle to the side. I had a couple of goes at it. That's why it looks as dark as it does. Then underneath that, slightly to the left of it, and about the same height, the same level as the centre of the headlight, draw that slightly curving rectangular light there. OK. Oh, doing well here, folks. Right, wheel arch time. Now, a wheel arch, a good place to start would be thinking of um, an upside down capital U going from the bumper up and then back down again. But the two legs of the U both need to slant towards slightly towards the right, just as I've done here. And when you get to the bottom of the U, about the level of the bumper, that curve needs to become more pronounced towards the right until it's just underneath the level of the bumper. Then you can do the front edge of that wheel arch curve. You can do another line as well, just to create that little bit of moulding on the bodywork, which you see on the car. OK, worth taking a little bit of time and trouble to get it right. Um, have as many goes as you need. Keep working with your pencil. And now the uh, front tyre. Now, the front of the tyre, or sorry, the side of the tyre, I should say, with the hubcap, that fits nicely in the wheel arch. You need an oval which doesn't reach quite to the top of the wheel arch, but touches it on both sides. And that really should give you the right kind of size, okay? Now you might see that I have actually extended the oval with the second line because I just didn't think it was quite big enough. Uh, and I do actually do a bit more remedial work to it afterwards. But when you're happy with that oval, then draw the oval inside it, which is the hubcap. Now look, the oval you're drawing inside the tyre to make the hubcap, that is closer to the sides of the oval, halfway down, than it is to the top or bottom of the oval. OK. And then you just need to draw a very flat curve away from the bottom of the um, tyre and curve it up into the underside of the car there. 
By the way, I don't know if I'd actually said about drawing in the underside of the car, but you can see where it is. It's a line which goes parallel to the bumper, extending from the bottom of the number plate, the license plate, round and up, and then it becomes the wheel arch. So we're going to try and finish this wing now. So you want a line curving up from the bottom of the wheel arch, only a very, very slight distance. Uh, you can see how far it curves. And then curving into an almost straight line upwards. Now, how far up you should go, the way to do this is take the top right hand corner of the rectangular side light. Sorry, top left hand corner of the rectangular side light. Draw a line from the top line from that corner going over the top line of the wheel arch up until where you're putting the straight line where the door is going to be. And that's where the two should meet. Now go back and look at the headlight and I want you to draw a gently curving line up from the top of the headlight to the top of the side light which is above the rectangular light and then continue this curved line again till it ends just above where the trim uh, you've just done ends. Join them up with a slight curve. And hooray, you've done it. The wing is done and the face of the uh, rover is almost complete. Bonnet line now. Now where the, uh, the top of the wing meets the side of the bonnet you've just drawn, I want you to do a curving line all the way across to the right hand side of the bonnet going through the little circle on the top of the trim in the centre of the bonnet. I've also added the mirror at this stage. Um, I did the mirror first and then put the line either side. But there's nothing wrong. You can either draw the top line and then draw the mirror over it or draw the mirror and draw the top line through it. You're working in pencil. It'd be absolutely fine. You can rub out what you don't want. If you look at the front tyre as well, on the, the left front tyre, I've extended that oval even more. It still, to me, just didn't look quite right. And that's why I've taken the bottom of the oval further down than it was. Now we've got the top of the bonnet, we can do the outline of the windscreen. So if you start on the left, start at the point where the end, the left hand edge and end of the wing meets the top of the bonnet and then draw a line which a straight line which curves ever so slightly to the right and I do mean only a slight bit okay you can see try and judge with your eyes looking at mine how far up it goes if you want a rough guide look at the distance from the top of the wing down to the trim and you want a good two times that distance maybe even slightly more now if you look on the right hand side of the top of the bonnet now just above well quite a bit above but on a level as far left as the left hand edge of the radiator grill on that bonnet line can you see I've just drawn that shape which goes to um, maybe not quite halfway along from the left hand edge of the radiator to the center of the radiator so could you draw that in and then we're going to draw the edge of the windscreen or windshield so along that shape you've just drawn along its top edge go about halfway along and then slant your line up to the right and you should stop it where it reaches the um, where it's directly above the left hand edge of that shape that you just drew. This should be a little bit lower than the edge of the windscreen on the left. And now you need a curved line to join them up. It should curve more on the left hand side and almost gently straight down to the right hand side because you see more of the curve of the windscreen on this side, on the left hand side than on the right hand side when the car's in this position. And the face of the car is done. Now the roof. 
I wish I had not done that. I wish I'd put in the side of the car before I put the roof in because I've taken it up too far. OK, my advice would be have a look at the roof and do it. Don't do this stage now. Do it after I've put the side of the car on. So can you see the curving line which goes from the top of the left hand headlight and curves all the way up to the windscreen? I want you to almost straighten that out and have that go straight back. Um, again, try and judge how far it is. Maybe twice the about twice the distance from the windscreen to the mirror okay and you don't want to take it much further than that now that's the top of the doors and bottom of the side mirrors now your best bet would be to draw a line from the top left hand corner of the windscreen tapering downwards it should be closer to the bottom of the windscreen at the back than it is towards the centre of the picture. But don't take it as far as the bottom line is because you want that nice slanting uh, line, slanting down to the left to almost meet it up, which is the back of the window. And that slant should be quite a bit more pronounced than the slant of the left hand edge of the windscreen. A bit of trial and error, but if you can get it close to the slant I've got there and won't be doing too bad. Now that top line you've just drawn, the top of the windows, come back towards the right but don't go halfway. Before you get to halfway then you want to draw another line slanting down and this should be about, it shouldn't be slanting as much as the back line but it should be slanting more than the uh, left hand edge of the windscreen. So it should be somewhere between the two of them. OK. OK. Now, when you've done this, you might just as well put the roof line in now, now that you've got the edge of the body. Basically, it's a gentle curve, but it should be much more gentle than the one I've done. The top of the curve, which is just before you get to the left hand edge of the windscreen, shouldn't be quite as high and then it should curve down to the back of the car. OK, if you don't do it quite as high as mine, it will look better. It's not a disaster. I think the car looks OK when I've finished. But looking back on it, it's the big thing I'd change. Now go down to the bottom of the back of the car at the level at the bottom of the um, side windows. Now that curved line which goes all the way from the back from the top of the headlight, that curved horizontal line, extend it curving downwards to the left a little bit more, about half the distance from the bottom edge of the rear uh, window on the left to the bottom edge of it on the right. About half of that distance is how far you want to take the body back and then just a very small straight line underneath it just to give us something to work the wheel and wheel arches with. OK, so extend the trim back that far as well. Now we're going to draw the bottom of the side of the car and also the wheels in. So you want a line going slanting, tapering up towards the trim line from the bottom of the front wheel arch. Now you want two gently curving lines or two Two lines which curve quite noticeably from the centre post of the um, side windows and also from where the rear window ends to meet the trim line. Then you want to take those lines straight down, but then curve the bottom round to meet the um, bottom edge of the car. Draw another line just above and uh, parallel to the bottom edge of the side of the car. OK, now I'll tell you something more about this particular line in a minute. You maybe don't want to exaggerate the slant of the bottom line quite as much. And I've drawn in the rear wheel arch in the back of the car now. So I took the that line at the bottom of the car and pushed it right on 
to where it was underneath um, where I'd drawn the line coming down at the back and I joined those two lines up. Now the wheel arch can you see again it's like a slanting upside down U which is slanting upwards to the left. You draw that in and then the oval for the hubcap and the tire around it. And that's the basic shape of the rover done. Now at this stage I was looking at it and I was thinking I that slant towards the back, the slant upwards is too much. Um, those doors should be coming down more. So I did do a little bit of remedial work with it, which you can see here. Now the good thing about applying paint and uh, using brush sticks, uh, sorry, um, brush pens after is that it does cover a multitude of sins. But it was important to me that I got it right. And this profile, it's not perfect, but it looks a lot better. And it gives you the idea of the substantial uh, nature of those doors on the side of the car, which it really didn't have previously. Right. Well, I'm going to take a breather for a minute to give you time to get your watercolors ready and also to have your brush paints to hand. Sorry, your brush pens to hand. If you've done these tutorials before, you know I love starting with wheels, wheel arches and the underside of the car because it just gives you a bit more freedom to experiment and um, push the colour a bit. So I mixed up um, the purpley crimson, which you can see on the front tyres. I also mixed up a dark blue and a lighter blue. So I started off with the tyres um, with the crimson and I applied the dark blue to the wheel arch and let them mingle a little bit. If you look at the front tyre, I'm really pleased with that and I'm pleased with it because I haven't stuck between the lines. It's uh, and, and ideally this painting between the lines you're taught to do when you're at school is, is kind of what I want to really to get away from. I use the darker blue a lot more on the rear tyre. And you can also see I used a watery light blue underneath the front bumper and the underside of the car. And you can see where that's mingled with the tyre on the right. I didn't do a lot of splatter on this painting and I got it in early. So you can see the only splatter I've done is the crimson purple and the blue. Now I made the decision uh, I wanted to do a two-tone uh, colour scheme for the car because I've seen these cars many times and I think they look fabulous when they've got a two-tone paint job on which which many of them did and I was going for a two-tone purple and a sort of red colour as well a sort of brownie red now you can see where the purples applied and this is actually um, a bluer purple than the kind of crimsony purple I put on the tyres I've also now I applied the brownie red to the main bodywork and found when I looked back at my photographs, I found I'd made a mistake. And the big mistake was the whole wing shouldn't have been in the purple. Uh, only the bit between the doors, the back of the car underneath the trim, and between the doors uh, underneath the trim. So I applied on top of the purple, I applied the red. And that's why that wing on the left looks so much darker than the, the other reds. Now I took a different colour red and applied that to some of the details of the wing on the left. And I think that worked actually quite nicely. I applied the darker red and also the purple to the underside as well. Now one big thing you might notice is I applied a little bit of light blue to the left hand side of the bonnet just to like a reflection of the sky and also the same very light blue on the left hand side of the windscreen on the top and bottom edges with just a little purple on the driver's side window. This was the stage at which I was going to put the watercolours away and start using the brush pens. At this stage is usually where the pictures look at their messiest. So I really wanted to 
heighten the contrast between the um, two tones. And so I applied a dark blue brush pen um, to the top and bottom edges of the paintwork on the side and then used a water brush to spread the paint between. Um, it certainly contrasts. It's maybe a bit bluer than um, I was intending from the start, but it does give that two-tone contrast, which is um, why I decided to stick with it there. And now I got my black, black brush pen out, um, added darkness and shadow underneath the uh, front wheel arch, and also um, a line of black brush pen directly underneath the underside of the car at the front. And I took the water brush and spread this to give the uh, grey shadow. And I also used the grey to mark out some of the interior inside the windscreen, which you should be able to see quite easily from here. Picking up the, the black brush pen again, I applied the water brush to the edge of it to just pick up a, a hint of the black, which I used as the grey for the front of the radiator and also for the top half of the headlights. And again, if you look closely, you should be able to see that. Now I took my 0.1 millimetre fine liner and used that to create the rubber seal around the um, windscreen and also some of the seals on the rear windows. I also ha um, added some shadows to the bottom of the doors and the wings, particularly where I'd made adjustments earlier, uh, and they look a hell of a lot better now. The same pen I used to go over some of the exterior of the radiator, and after that I applied a red brush pen just on top of that. And I'm also starting, if you can see, I've made used a red brush pen to do some of the shadows around the lights. And then a brown brush pen underneath and where the wings just join them. Uh, it's all about subtle details from now on, about refining what we've actually got. So penultimate stage, fine liner to outline the rear windows and uh, the side windows on the right. Fine liner to create the lines, the details on the headlights, the front lights. OK, um, more brown brush pen for shadows on the sides of the bonnet and on the front of the car, particularly with the lights on the left. And um, a little bit more work on the wheel arches and definition to the front tires. And the last stage. Now, if you look on the in the wheel arch, you'll see I've actually done some hatching with a fine liner. I also do that on the bottom of the um, tire as well. I have applied a little more dark shadow underneath the uh, side of the car and just you lightly used a uh, water brush just to pull that out from the side and that's quite a nice effect. I also used um, a moist water brush just to pull some of the colour off the rear and the sides of the car and also on the off the uh, right wing because you know I've said this before I'm not making photographs I want it to look like something which has been painted. Uh, finally I did the details on the radiator with a fine liner. Also, if you just notice the interior of the RAC badge, I've just added a little bit of blue there. I decided on the number plate, changed the numbers from any of, so it's not the same as any of the photographs which I was looking at. And um, all that was left really was to write that it's a Rover P5 and sign my name. So before I sign off, I'm just going to show you very quickly all of the stages again without any annoying voiceover from me. And uh, that will be the end of the video. So three, two, one. Here we go.